this one. Okay. 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 Shall we start? Are we ready? Good afternoon. Thank you for expressing your interest in our final press conference of the parliamentary dimension of the Bulgarian presidency of the Council of the European Union. After those two days of intensive political discussions, we may say that we have reached success. First, because of the results we have accomplished in terms of conclusions, the text of the conclusions uh, was adopted by our forum, and uh, it reflects the Bulgarian position as a Bulgarian parliament. Uh, we have adopted uh, those uh, positions uh, last year as an orientation, uh, both uh, within uh, the terms of the priorities and uh, the direction of the discussions on the policies that have to be implemented. Therefore, I believe that the objectives we have set ourselves uh, for those two days uh, have been accomplished successfully. I should say that the last discussion that we have held, uh, it focused on uh, the levels on which decisions uh, should be made, on the role of the European Commission and where the European Commission may change its approach, is part of the um, mandate of the so-called task force, uh, which was set up uh, by the president of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker. Probably, uh, the first vice president of the European Commission, uh, Mr. Timmermans, will dwell a little bit more on this topic. Uh, he's actually uh, the head of this task force. So I will not uh, dwell myself on this particular topic. I would like to focus on the topic of the Western Balkans. This is a key priority of the Bulgarian presidency as a whole and uh, the parliamentary dimension of the presidency in particular. I would like to say that the document we have adopted, I mean uh, the document adopted by the representatives of the national parliaments, uh, the language on uh, the commitment of the European Union uh, and uh, um, on the Western Balkans is a bit uh, more expressive uh, than the SOFIA agenda. And uh, we should say that in that respect, uh, since May, we have uh, built upon uh, what we have, uh, have achieved in May. We have brought more attention and more focus. Uh, on behalf of the member states and the European institutions on that topic. On the one hand, we may say that uh, the delegates have expressed uh, their large support uh, for this priority of the Bulgarian presidency, and on the other hand, uh, supported firmly the European perspective of the Western Balkan. This is a very important position and a very important platform uh, on which we will be able to continue to develop our ambitions in this particular area. It is very important for us uh, that Austria and the representatives of Austria and Croatia, which will be uh, president of the Council uh, in 2020, and Romania, which will be presiding the Council after Austria, have confirmed that uh, this will remain a priority for all three presidencies. And uh, uh, it gives us the reassurances that what we have started uh, will be built upon and we will continue to participate in it. I mean, Bulgaria and the Bulgarian parliament will continue to participate in this process. Now, a few words on cohesion policy. Definitely, this is one of the key topics for Bulgaria and the key for the uh, parliamentary dimension of the presidency. On this topic, there has been uh, some intensive debate in the plenary uh, and uh, in the conclusions that we have adopted in our meeting. I would like to focus on one particular aspect the meeting of the committees uh, on union affairs uh, in the parliaments of the member states have underlined that the cohesion policy should make use uh, uh, should be useful for all regions but a priority should be given uh, to the regions uh, that are less uh, developed and should receive a proportionally higher uh, percentage of uh, the funding i think this is one key element uh, there has been uh, some intense uh, arguing, and uh, as a result, uh, however, we have adopted the text which says that the new uh, challenges for the European Union 
should not be funded at the expense of the cohesion policy or to the detriment of the cohesion policy. I think that the basis we have built during this meeting will be really important for the upcoming debates on the European level between the member states. I would also say that yet another important element which was highlighted in the Bulgarian parliament as well relates to the fact that uh, we, are all, we all agree that in the next period the cohesion policy should overcome some of the shortcomings, some of, some of the weaknesses of this policy. For example, it should be simplified, uh, the long and cumbersome administrative procedures should be shortened, there should be more flexibility in project management and some other elements. You can see that we have gone into some detail in this discussion, but they are important and the position of national parliaments on those uh, specifics uh, is really crucial. I would also like to say that um, I, would, I would also like to highlight something that you probably noticed yesterday. The success of the meeting, in addition to the uh, debates that we have had, is also expressed uh, in the attitude of the parliaments and the European institutions towards this topic. I would like to say that uh, something unique uh, for our presidency is that Yesterday, we had the presence of the Bulgarian president, the Bulgarian prime minister, the speaker of the Bulgarian parliament, two um, deputy prime ministers uh, uh, participating in the discussions, and the minister of the presidency of Bulgaria of the council. And we have shown uh, an agreement on the achievements. First, of course, we have agreed on the objectives, and then we have agreed what achievements have been accomplished. And we've shown to um, those 200 parliamentarians who have gathered at the largest uh, parliamentary meeting here in Sofia, there were more than 300 participants overall. Uh, we have demonstrated uh, this attitude of ours and we have received uh, support from the European institutions. Here with us uh, we have the first Vice President of the European Commission. We also had the uh, first Vice President of the uh, European Parliament in the discussions. And uh, for the first time uh, we have also invited uh, the President of the European Economic and Social Committee and he also participated in our discussions. The committee is also very important in the European uh, uh, landscape. We also had representatives of the Committee of the Regions. Uh, they represent the regional authorities. And I think that this is a very good basis for collaboration that we have established probably for the first time, but we hope it will continue in the future as well. I would like to also express my gratitude to all those who actively helped in uh, uh, implementing the parliamentary dimension in this particular meeting. In, I would like to thank the administration of the National Assembly. I would like to thank our assistants and specifically our volunteers who have made a lot of effort <laughs> to solve some small technical glitches uh, that uh, inevitably accompany meetings of this scale. And I would also like to thank for the support uh, of the Ministry of the Bulgarian Presidency. In those one and a half days, uh, we have heard a lot of comments and uh, a lot of uh, interventions by the key speakers, but we also had uh, 120 interventions by the delegates, and this is yet another success because each of the interventions contained a specific message. Believe me, it's not easy to manage uh, this kind of a process, uh, but uh, we had some very positive feedback at the end. In conclusion, I would like to mention that in addition to the uh, very serious political agenda, um, I have reiterated on numerous occasions that the Bulgarian presidency is also an occasion to demonstrate uh, what Bulgaria is like, uh, what its nature, history and culture are like, and to, uh, for, for people to see the spirit of Bulgaria. And, that, and in that sense, I believe that the Bulgarian presidency achieved some successes as well. And the parliamentary dimension, I dare say, contributed to this success. In those two last days, we were able to demonstrate the work of uh, young Bulgarian artists. They uh, actually painted in front of the eyes of all the delegates and we gave uh, to the Austrian presidency, to the Romanian uh, presidency and to the um, Estonian presidency, which will exit the Troika now, uh, three such paintings. And uh, Chrissy and Christian Kostov, uh, participants in uh, Eurovision contest, were also performing for the delegates. An honorary guest uh, in the first evening uh, was uh, Dimitar Berbatov, uh, not only as uh, a famous 
Bulgarian and uh, a sports person, but also as an active Bulgarian who works with children and an ambassador of UNESCO. I think not many people are familiar with this fact. We also uh, demonstrated uh, a Bulgarian folk song, uh, um, Vala Balkanska, performed uh, Delo Haidutin, which is a very famous Bulgarian folk song. The Bulgarian uh, uh, folklore school uh, also performed the national musical school, uh, fire dancing, and uh, uh, the Nightingale Quartet perf performed as well. I'm uh, listing all those uh, performances because uh, uh, the presidency is not only about the documents that are adopted, it's uh, about uh, the atmosphere that we create, and I'm convinced that all the guests uh, who have been here with us for the last couple of days uh, will keep Bulgaria in their hearts and hopefully for a long time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, let me be very clear. The Bulgarian presidency, the parliamentary dimension of the Bulgarian presidency is a great success. Um, I think um, what was discussed today, this morning, I was only here for this morning, it gives us the opportunity to build on uh, in the future. This is another important step in increasing the role of national parliaments in EU decision making. It's also an important step in understanding that without the participation of national parliaments, it will be very difficult to build um, support in the member states for the policies the European Union is developing. And the European Commission is very grateful to the Bulgarian presidency for having given us the opportunity to discuss that uh, this morning. Uh, Christian is also a member of the task force I have the honor to lead uh, on doing things better, on looking at the issue of subsidiarity, proportionality, which means do we do the right things in Europe and do we use the right instruments for doing that and also could we do it better? I think um, it doesn't mean that you're not pro-European if you're critical about what Europe doesn't do well. I think it means that you're, if you're pro-European you're also very critical about areas where you could improve Europe's performance. And if I look at the challenges we face, just look at the mon monumental challenge of migration, which we cannot handle individually as member states, which will we have to handle collectively, uh, and uh, which doesn't have one answer, which has so many answers we need to apply at the same time. We need to do a better job at our external border protection. We also need to do a better job at reaching agreements with the countries of origin so that people have an opportunity to build a future where they belong and not uh, feel the need to move elsewhere. We also need to do a better job in making agreements with countries of transit so that we collectively fight um, this uh, terrible business of uh, illegal crossings, which is uh, one of the uh, fastest growing areas of criminal activity that we should be fighting collectively. We also need to make sure that as Europeans, if we are challenged by the issue of migration, we find it in our hearts to show solidarity with those countries most affected uh, by uh, that uh, issue. And I have to say, Bulgaria is a country that has shown great solidarity and has shown, taken great responsibility. Being uh, where it is, it is challenged, uh, given the fact that much of the migratory pressure comes from this part of the world or, or neighboring areas. And Bulgaria has shown uh, great uh, determination uh, to play a very positive European role in that. Um, that was not the discussion today, uh, but if we talk about subsidiarity, proportionality, if we talk about doing things better, we are talking about finding solutions for concrete problems. And not just migration, our security is another issue. Our energy policy should be a policy that is European and that takes into interest all the interests of the member states. Our policy towards grasping the opportunity of the digital age. And I know that in the next couple of days, this is also going to be a topic for discussion here in Sofia. Um, the challenge posed by changing international relations. I mean, this is the first time in my living memory that we now have an American president who apparently believes it is in America's interest to have a divided Europe instead of a Europe that st stays stronger together. So that all is a challenge to us Europeans to show that we are united when unity is what is needed to perform 
and to deliver for our citizens. This was very much the topic of today. I was impressed by the participation of national parliaments in all of this. Uh, of course, we do not agree with everything and they do not agree with everything, but it's, you know, it's a good European tradition that if you disagree, you talk about it and you find common ground and you find a compromise that brings us forward. And I think today's meeting has been an important moment for that. And uh, again, I want to end with uh, the same remark as uh, my opening remark. We have uh, to thank uh, the Bulgarian presidency for providing that. And I also want to thank Christian personally for his leadership. Um, you know, the way he led the meeting led to a very positive discussion. Everybody felt heard and still he was able to stick within the time limits, which I think is uh, something that is quite unique, uh, having been to many of these meetings. Thank you very much for that, Christian. Thank you. If you have any questions, you have the floor. Hello, Violeta Shikova from the Bulgarian National Radio. I have a question to Mr. Timmermans. Uh, Mr. Timmermans, uh, your position is clear on the migrants' question and uh, it remains unchanged. You believe that there should be a common European position on this matter. How um, do you view the request of our Prime Minister to find a compromise option, uh, that is to close the external borders and all the migrants to go through uh, official checkpoints uh, for those countries who would like to integrate them? Thank you. I have to say that uh, Boyko Borisov has been a part of the search for compromise at the European level. He's brought ideas to the table. He's brought um, uh, a spirit of compromise to the table. He's helped member states who have diverging views get uh, closer together. The, the, the issue is, if we really want to find a sustainable solution for the migration issue, which is an issue that is going to be with us for generations, you cannot just look at one aspect. You need to look at the whole thing in, in total. So that means, indeed, a better and stronger external border uh, control. It means, indeed, that you have to have, I would, say, I would say, one European asylum procedure so that you know exactly everywhere that there's no, that there's no incentive for people who, want, who are looking for asylum to go asylum hopping between member states. It's very important. I also believe we have to make good agreements with the countries of origin and transit about how you treat uh, uh, migrants and refugees. And of course, the solidarity issue within the EU will remain very important. I also believe we need, if you look at the future and our demographic development, a very positive uh, policy of legal migration, of how Europe retains its openness to the migration Europe will need. And we not, we not become obsessed only by keeping people out of Europe. That would be self-defeating uh, as a policy. In that framework, I do believe there is scope to talk to international organizations such as UNHCR, such as IOM, how you treat people who happen to be outside of the EU wanting to, sorry, wanting to come into the EU, how you treat them, how, they are, um, uh, how the reception facilities are for them, etc., outside of the EU. Um, IOM and UNHCR are prepared for that discussion. Uh, the European Commission is prepared to help uh, that uh, discussion. Um, but again, um, the, the, the ideas brought to the table by Prime Minister Borisov are only one stone in a huge wall that needs to be built with all the other elements. And as an element, I think it could contribute to finding a solution. But it, it's, there is no silver bullet here. There's no one panacea. If we do not tackle all the other issues at the same time, we will not find a sustainable solution. Thank you. You have the floor for questions. Inna Kapanska from the Bulgarian National Television. First, a question to Mr. Vigenin. You said that although it was difficult, today you managed to reach an agreement uh, what uh, areas should not be, or what, uh, what challenges should not be funded by the cohesion policy. And one question for Mr. Timmermans. Can you realistically see that uh, uh, the budget will be adopted before the European elections next year? And uh, is there a discussion of uh, um, 
um, drawing, uh, withdrawing funding by the European Commission from the policy. Yeah, uh, um, thank you for your question. Probably I wasn't clear enough. Uh, in the initial proposal of the Commission and in the discussions, in the initial discussions, there is a clear idea that in the next seven years the European Union should find money for new policies and new tasks that have to be tackled by the European Union and that would need money uh, from the European budget having in mind uh, the fact uh, that the United Kingdom uh, uh, from one point onwards will no longer contribute to the budget. And uh, uh, there is a sentiment uh, in some that uh, um, reallocating money from one area to another, uh, for example, from the common agricultural policy and the cohesion policy to other areas, um, some see this as a risk. Uh, what we have agreed here is that the cohesion policy should not be touched. It should be adequately funded, and it is one of the most successful policies of the European Union. And if we must find funding for new challenges and tasks of the Union, uh, such funding should not be uh, searched by reallocating money from other areas, for example, from the cohesion policy. And uh, as, a, as a sentence, I may summarize, do not touch the cohesion policy, find the money somewhere else. And this is the um, agreement that we have reached yesterday. Hopefully the Commission will take this decision into account. Actually, the discussions are just now starting for the next budget, so things are still to be seen. From, from my perspective, um, when the Commission has to draft a budget, what are the, the surroundings, what are the conditions under which we need to do this? First of all, Brexit, which means 12 to 14 billion less. Then the net contributing countries saying not one euro more. Then the net recipient countries saying not one euro less. Then quite a range of countries saying we need new priorities and money for new priorities. Security, migration, the fourth industrial revolution, new priorities. And then there are countries saying we know not one euro less for old for the existing priority. They should also be. That it's impossible to get, bring all together and then so that everybody has his view. It's impossible. So what we did as Commission, I think, is also reflecting our priority that we should be big on big things and small on small things. We increase modestly the budget. Yes, that means that net contributors will be asked to contribute slightly more. We change some of the priorities. Yes, that means that in some areas there would be slightly less money um, uh, than um, uh, before. We have created the possibility of new policy areas where we could invest in our, in our security. I think this is an issue that in Bulgaria uh, also has a great interest. And all of this we brought together in a proposal. Now, this proposal is now brought to the European Parliament and the Council and they will have to negotiate about this. Is this going to happen soon? I hope so. And I think the chances of this happening uh, before the European elections are increasing because there is an increasing understanding in member states that if you wait too long and you decide about the issue after the European elections, you might lose one or two years of programming, which would be, um, I think, for a country like Bulgaria, quite a blow to the investments you are now doing in improving your economic and physical infrastructure, which is yielding great uh, growth results. Uh, so um, the Commission will insist that we decide this before the European elections. I see an increasing number of leaders of nations saying the same thing, and I hope we can do that because that, I think, is in the interest of the EU as a whole, but it's certainly in the interest of a country like Bulgaria. Well, if you allow me just to add something, it might be a joke, but uh, in the discussions that we had, especially on the MFF, I have insisted to keep the wording a uh, good starting point for the uh, Commission proposal. I said we have to encourage the Commission because some wanted to delete good and to leave only starting point. So for us, uh, your proposal is good starting point and discussions are to be continued. Thank you. Uh, are there other questions? If there are no other questions, I would like to thank you and uh, thank Mr. Timmermans for his participation today. I would like to note that Mr. Timmermans also attended uh, the 
initial conference of the parliamentary dimension of the Bulgarian presidency in January. He's uh, today with us as well at the final meeting. I would like to thank him for his commitment, and hopefully we will be able to support him in his future work. Thank you.